Hello guys and all our friends, witches, sorcerers, all magical creatures. Welcome back to another episode of After, After Dusk. Dusk. And of course, before we begin with everything, we do wish to raise our glasses to all you magical beings out there and wish you a magical and a prosperous new year. It's been an incredible adventure for the two of us this year. We have obviously started this channel, we have started some other journeys as well, some of which you will hear about in the future, <laughs> not today, unfortunately. But yes, to all of you out there practicing the magic, practicing the good and the very best of this world, here's to you and here's to all the magic that's yet to come. So here's to us. Yes, here's to us as well. With that said, guys, Let's begin with the video. Okay guys, we are back here and with a yet another very interesting topic, I would dare to say. And maybe Sammy could shed some light upon what we will be talking about in this specific video. So today we will be discussing a term that has actually occurred due to the online community of witchcraft which is being in the broom closet. Yes, precisely. Wait a minute, broom closet. It's I like think calling... I would swear, I would swear, I like I heard that term somewhere else, being in the closet, but uh, maybe it's similar, maybe it's not, let's see. So can you maybe explain to us, Sami, what does being in the broom closet mean? What is a broom closet and what does it actually refer to? Well, it's exactly what you mean, Joe. <laughs> Okay. Exactly what you think. It's not being comfortable with either standing up for your practice, for your, sp for your spiritual beliefs, or not being uh, comfortable with displaying them. Sometimes you would be comfortable, but your surroundings or your local community yeah. would actually, it would expose you to, to a certain level of danger in case you decide to be open about it. Yeah. And yeah, it still happens today, <laughs> believe it or not. It does happen. So just to sum up, if I understood you correctly, <laughs> just for our baby witches out there who might be new to the craft and haven't heard the term before possibly, or just some of you who might need some further explanation, being in the broom closet is basically not feeling comfortable or even allowed in some cases to share the fact that you are practicing, that you are in the craft, that you are basically a witch. Uh, so that thing that would actually be the, the summary of it. So now that we've got that covered, let's talk a bit about some reasons because there are obviously millions of them. Each of us is an individual person, they have their own reasons, but there are some reasons that are most repetitive in the sense that they are the most common for which then people choose to stay in this so-called broom closet. And uh, Sami, what would some of those reasons be, for example? Uh, well, suffering the, the consequences of coming out. For example, if you are living in a very uh, clo closed up community that is, uh, that is considering that kind of thing controversial, you might uh, suffer uh, your job loss. Uh, uh, maybe if you're living in a rental, you could get kicked out uh, or just being denounced by your family members. You yeah. know, now this is where the, the personal you know, set of beliefs comes in, like, if your family denounces you because of your religious beliefs, like, what is it saying about them? But that's, you know, we will not interfere into that. It's just, so they, you could be suffering the actual consequences in the material world. You could be bullied. You could expose. There could be actually even legal consequences, guys. There are countries in the world, I will mention some of them, I will call them out because I do have to do that. The first two that come to mind are Saudi Arabia and Brunei, where it is actually illegal to practice witchcraft and sorcery under the Sharia law. So you would actually get a very lengthy prison sentence there for getting caught doing witchcraft, or you would actually also possibly get a death penalty as well. So uh, those are some, you know, exceptions, extreme exceptions, I'd say, but also in Indonesia, some parts of Indonesia have this law against, uh, you know, not being able to practice such stuff. Egypt, I believe, also has some such laws where it is, I, I believe in Egypt it is the case that it is illegal to do so because they think it's like impersonating another religion and obviously there's only one uh, right and correct religion uh, in Egypt as per the law. So, you know, uh, obviously you could be ostracized as well in your work, you could get fired, um, probably, you know, in such more 
uh, let's say extreme cases of locations and countries but yes uh, this could also fall under the umbrella of uh, reasons why someone would willfully choose to stay in the closet like one more thing that has actually happened like 10 years ago so this uh, occultish new age store appeared in one of the european countries and what they did is they actually so the the people who didn't like this kind of stuff, they destroyed the shop overnight. You know, just imagine that you're you're putting everything that you can, investing in your business, and then it all gets shattered because somebody doesn't like your personal set of beliefs. What would happen if it was the other way around? Exactly. You will, you will get absolutely ostracized by the media, by everyone. And then when this happens, obviously, we do have to mention, we will not mention which country it is specifically. It is a very traditionalist, uh, traditionally oriented, a very Catholic like country so obviously people there are not as open as they maybe should be towards you know um these kind of you know other view of the world that doesn't necessarily align with theirs so i think that now that we've covered some of the reasons why someone would stay in the broom closet right and obviously we mentioned the, the things that could impact their decision to stay in it or get out but if you for any reason whatsoever can't get out do we have some do we have some tips for such practitioners and and in in the sense of how they could and what they could do in order to be able to practice in relative secrecy yes uh well it's it's connected with other parts of your craft it largely depends on how your practice looks like so if you do not have a permanent altar that will obviously help because you don't need an elaborative or even you don't you don't even need an altar to practice your craft you know you can just do so with a simple candle if it, it, it could be a yankee candle you know uh, which for example your mom may not be suspicious of that you know uh, it's uh, and, and this is I think this is why the, the whole phrase that intention is everything maybe got so popularized because you know uh, you can do witchcraft to some extent or you could do more elaborative rituals that that require mm -hmm. or specific tools in nature or somewhere in isolation you could travel somewhere where it's more acceptable to do it for example if you have or if you have a vacation home obviously not everybody can do it. Uh, but maybe you could travel to a relative that is open-minded about it or something like that. You know, yeah. uh, th there are small ways like this. You know, you just need to, you need to start. You need to remember yourself to to really do research ways and practices of witchcraft that are not dependent on materialistic tools. Exactly. I think you've covered it all. So those would be, as far as I'm concerned, as well the most important tips in this regard just you know not just for the altar but you don't have to have any permanent kind of setup in your house especially so you can just always set it up as you go it doesn't have to be anything elaborate it doesn't have to be anything complex as the lovely sammy said you could just you know use the the most simple ingredients and just uh, charge them yourself we will be talking about such things in future videos so obviously i would wish to stick around for that but basically i think just one thing that popped into my mind because we are looking at the kitchen area obviously you know kitchen witchcraft you can work you can work with herbs in your kitchen yeah. without being suspicious because okay it's just you cutting garlic <laughs> yes obviously so if you have like um, a shelf um, or a chest thing full of jars filled with you know different herbs in your room and your my mum or dad finds it and they're not too keen on this whole aspect of witchcraft that's going to cause you trouble but if you just here and there when you want to do a spell want to perform a certain ritual if you just go to the kitchen and steal some spices from uh, your mom uh, you know some basically those that you can buy at every supermarket that would also work as well so they were just as well they might not look as fancy as the ones you might be seeing in other witches uh, videos you know those on tiktok or here on youtube but they do work so it is all about the intention or most of it is about the intention behind what you're doing uh, which is something that we have already partially covered but also we'll talk about a lot more in our future Video. So with that said, do you have anything more to add on the topic, Sammy? I think one thing that they're all wondering is, of course, you should, do. <laughs> of course I do, no, no this should, is a good they, thing. Like, should they get out of the room closet if they are in one? I think the only correct answer here would be, it depends. 
we can't give you an ultimate no, we can't give you an ultimate yes, you know, it all depends, it depends on your circumstances, it depends on your own personality, it depends on a lot of factors, but in essence, you are the only person that can decide that for yourself. So we are here that can maybe help you with some tips, with some tricks, and maybe help you find and guide you towards this path of, um, you know, where it will be easier for you to come out, but we can't do it for you. So whether you will get out, whether you will want to get out or not, it's all on you. And, you know, you can actually reach out to us. You can reach out to other online witchcraft communities for assistance, for help. Uh, it's ultimately the decision that you will have to make yourself. I believe you can now hear the fireworks. Yes, the fireworks have started and yeah. I also believe that with it, uh, it has also symbolized the end of our today's video. We are maybe making a bit shorter now because uh, we are also getting ready to go out for New <laughs> Year's, guys. And uh, that said, please, if you haven't already, like this video, comment below your thoughts on being in the broom closet, if you have any personal experience with that aspect of witchcraft, and obviously subscribe to our channel and turn on that got them bell icon <laughs> so that you get notified immediately after we post some new content. Yes, I think happy it's time year, to raise guys. our glasses and guys and <laughs> happy new years and we wish you all the best. Live some magic. Bye bye. Cheers.